welcome to Watch Me Code. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to install RabbitMQ on a Mac. Now, if you're not familiar with RabbitMQ, it is a robust messaging system for building applications in a distributed manner. It basically allows you to communicate between applications or processes using messages instead of other protocols like HTTP or any other remote procedure calls that you may have done in the past. To get started, we're going to head over to the installation page here. And there are a number of different links that you can click on. For now, avoid these quick download links. I keep clicking these accidentally, but what I really want to do is come down here to the installation guides. And there are a number of different options for installing RabbitMQ on a Mac, but I'm going to go with Homebrew, which is my preferred way to install most things. Now, according to the documentation, all I really need to do is run brew update to make sure that I have the latest and greatest brew. So let's go ahead and do that. And once I have brew updated, I can run brew install RabbitMQ. This will download and install RabbitMQ itself. Now, after you run the initial installation like this, RabbitMQ is not actually going to be up and running yet. There's a couple of things that you need to do. You either need to update your path to include user local sbin so you can run RabbitMQ-server, or you need to link the RabbitMQ plist so that RabbitMQ will automatically start when you log into your box. I'm going to go ahead and do that because, quite frankly, I do a lot of development with RabbitMQ and I want it running every time I log into my box without having to start it manually. So I'm just going to copy and paste this right here. And once I've done that, I'm going to run launch control load on the resulting file that I linked to. Next up, I'm going to hit localhost colon 15672. This is the RabbitMQ management interface. And when you first get to this page, you'll see it's asking for a username and password. Now the default username and password is guest and guest. And once you log in, you'll be able to see the status of RabbitMQ on your system. And as you can see, I'm running RabbitMQ 342 with Erlang 17. And yes, RabbitMQ actually is an Erlang process. So when you install RabbitMQ on your box for the first time, it is going to install Erlang. Now from this management interface, you'll be able to do a lot with RabbitMQ, including management of your queues, your exchanges, your users, and everything else that you need to do. But generally speaking, I recommend getting used to the command line tools that you have inside of RabbitMQ, because you will be able to do things a little bit faster and a little more efficiently, especially when it comes to automating things. But the management interface is a very useful thing once you start using queues and exchanges and you need to be able to see the messages that are currently inside of your queues. But this is all I'm going to show you in this episode. Stay tuned for an upcoming episode where I will show you how to use RabbitMQ from both the command line and the management interface. Bye.